This week on Wisconsin Foodie. I don't really mess with my father's beef too much because he does it right on his own. Chef Justin Carlisle, who was born and bred Wisconsin boy, took that sense of what our tastes are all about and turned it into something fine. Um, the beef tartare comes from Sundays with my grandmother. Always cannibal sandwiches. That's how she got you to eat them. It is, sandwiches. it is. I've always wanted a ramen shop, so why not on the weekends turn Arden into a ramen shop? Flavored broth with noodles in it isn't ramen. It's not 33 cent packets. You know, it's a labor of love. It's just this magical thing. How are we doing? Good, brother. How are you? We're pretty calm during the day. So we can <laughs> You're do not this. even open. No, not at all. We're not even open half the week. Cool. You know, Wednesday through Saturday. All right. All right so I'm going to cook you some things and we'll talk about them and cool. we'll go from there. And eventually we'll have a beer. Probably. Yeah, that good. That usually happens. <sighs> usually we start out with a snack. A lot of places call them amuse bouches, but we're not French. Right. So it's uh, what, what amuse bouche in Lyon is, snack is in Wisconsin. Yep something to set the tone of where you are and what the restaurant is. Uh, we kind of try to bring comfort to people. Uh, so it's going to be a pretzel gougere. Beer cheese soup is going to be on the inside. And then we usually just top it off with an aged grana cheese. Uh, we kind of play it off as a really fancy cheese puff. And you're going to see when we serve it, we're going to serve it in a small dish, but we're going to serve it where there's no silverware on the table. So everybody, it's kind of finger food. So try to hopefully soften the mood, kind of get people to um, think that it's a little more casual and have a fun time with it. So I just, boom, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, no silverware, finger food, snacks. <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, it's not so much as fantastic as it tastes good, which it does. But in, there should be, and hopefully there's, it's a familiar flavor. It's something that you're familiar with. The familiarity washes over me. Right. You're oat casual, right? This is another version of fine dining. Sure. It's about the food. It's about the processes. It's about the interaction. It's about what the establishment serves. But. It doesn't have to be pretentious, you know. So for the next dishes we're going to prepare, we're going to do the beef tartare. We're going to start with the diced beef. Just a larger dice, like a small dice that we do. Lemon oil to add more acidity, but we don't straight it lemon juice. Pepper. Uh, fine sea salt. Chives. Shallots. And then we just mix, fold in. I don't really mess with my father's beef too much because he does it right on his own. Layer of beef down. Next layer is going to be the deviled egg mousse. So egg yolks, mayonnaise, some vinegar, salt, pepper, uh, cayenne. Let me slide this off. Level it out. Take roasted bone marrow, uh, garlic, shallots, herbs. Roast it out until it all melts out of the bone. It whips up kind of like buttercream. Spread it out in the sheets. Then we cut it to fit on top. And then we're going to season the top of that. We're going to serve that with another course that we have is going to be the milk course. House made butter that we make uh, out of the milk and cream that we get from Edelweiss and Bruce. Uh, he makes the Munster cheese out of the same batch of the milk and cream that we get from him. And then we take the butter that we make, his milk, and we make panaleo, which is going to be milk bread. Nice silverware presentation, Chef. Yeah, this is, we're the waiters too. I love it, I know. <laughs> so uh, that's part of demystifying the whole process. It is. You know, all of us come out and we discuss with people, we talk to people. So with these dishes are pretty much dishes that will always be on Ardent. I'm trying to think of when we opened, obviously we're the dairy state, um, but how can we really connect with the farmers and the milk? So four hours a week we drive, drive to New Glarus, yep. pick up our milk and cream of the week, uh, we make all of our own butter here. We have the best butter in the world. Well, for sure. Once you taste it and you realize, you know, my grandparents, they ate really well. You know, for not having a lot, they ate extremely well. That's what you can do with the luxurious butter. Right. With the real thing. Yeah. Um, the beef tartare comes from Sundays with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Always cannibal sandwiches. That's how she got you to eat it. It is. It is. Raw beef, shaved onions, Wonder Bread. And then, but she'd always serve deviled eggs on the side. So I don't, we'd always mash it together. So now I just combine and put it together. It's a whole lot of yummy together. It is. So as I bite into it, every holiday memory, every uh, warm family gathering, every Wisconsin-ness of it washes over me too. The next dish we're gonna do, 
um, is going to be a chocolate dessert. It comes from my mother who used to make saltine bark or bars. So this comes off of that dessert. Cake-wise, on the bottom is going to be a praline of saltine crackers, chocolate cocoa puffs, chocolate and caramel. The next is going to be salted caramel chocolate. The next layer is going to be a saltine genoise or sponge cake. Then we're going to have a buttermilk mousse is going to be on top with a little bit of creme fraiche. And then on top of that, we go with the saltine ice cream. Uh, what we do is we take saltines, steep them in cream for two to three days, warm it up with the saltines in it. We'll mash through as much of the starch and saltines that we can have, freeze it, and then we'll spin it in the apocalypse machine. I love this dish because it's pure mom. It is. So how long did it take for this thing to get engineered from mom's recipe to this dessert? From start to finish, it was roughly about three months. And then finally my mom came in to eat and, you know, I got Mother Mary approved. So <laughs> enjoy. Yeah. So the saltine on almost every level of every component on the dish. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's beyond great. It should taste beautifully and make you happy. Yeah. It's just good food. That's all we're trying to do. You can sleep well at night, playing your Wisconsin voice forward in exquisite cuisine like this. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Later, buddy. All right. Thank you good so much. Good seeing you. Thank you so much for yeah. coming down. I'll be back uh, when the curtains are closed and have some ramen. Yes. Yeah. We'll do it again. We'll sling some noodles. No problem. Take Later, care. bro. I've always wanted a ramen shop. I worked with a Japanese man, you know, years ago and kind of got my first experience when we went to Japan and Tokyo of what real ramen is. Flavored broth with noodles in it isn't ramen. It's not 33 cent packets. You know, it's very specific on the noodles and on the broth on how it's made. You know, it's a labor of love. It's just this magical thing that I got obsessed with. I enjoyed ramen, so why not on the weekends turn Arden into a ramen shop? Other chefs in the city get done between 11 o'clock, 1 a.m. There isn't really any place for us to eat. You're looking at fast food or fried bar food. You know, it's, it's just what it is. So when I opened up, it was kind of a philosophy that instead of going to a busy place, we can come down to the restaurant and socialize and talk and get along and have some good food. Kind of turned into a little bit more than that since that happened. Coming right through. Coming up. Coming through. We started in December, roughly a month after we opened Arden, uh, something called Red Light Ramen. Friday and Saturday nights, when the last customers leave, 10:30ish, 11 o'clock, uh, we turn around and we flip over the restaurant. We close the windows off with burlap sacks, turn the lights down low, and we start at 11:30. Usually a line out the door starts forming around 11, 11, 15. It's set up with, in a sense, Japanese style with soy sauce, uh, togarashi, chili oils on all the tables. And then one type of ramen was the Dukonku style ramen, which is the southern Japanese style. And it's the emulsified pork fat. It's traditionally the only pork ramen. Uh, for me, I've been keeping it very traditional. It's very important for me to keep it traditional. We're building flavors and we're starting out with, you know, kombu and dried mushrooms. For ours, we have pork skin and pork necks and pork feet and all the off cuts of pork. Chicken feet, chicken legs, a lot of mirepoix, ginger, garlic, scallion bottoms, bonito. We make a tare as an extra seasoning layer that's fried chicken thighs, soy sauce and mirin all blended up. And then all of a sudden we're boiling it and we're boiling it nonstop for 15 and now we're pushing almost you know, 28 hours, which on a normal stock, you sit there and you simmer it and you skim it and you, you want to take all the, you know, impurities out of it. On this stock, you boil the impurities. You want to emulsify it in this milky white rich stock. And that's all we serve is the one type of ramen. You have five toppings and everybody can customize it, whether we top it with dried anchovies, gingers, carrots, leeks. It's, it's happiness to me, you know, it's comfort in a bowl.
Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. Society Insurance, small details, big difference. Outpost Natural Foods Co-op. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Illing Company, creating packaging solutions for you. Fab Wisconsin, the regional food and beverage industry cluster. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. WMSE 91.7 FM, Frontier Radio. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin are proud to support Wisconsin Foodie, helping viewers celebrate our state's vibrant food culture. With nearly 11,000 family dairy farms, the Wisconsin dairy industry generates more than $26 billion annually for the Wisconsin economy and brings recognition to the state for producing award-winning cheeses. I've had Society Insurance for my restaurant from the beginning because I know they understand my business and how it's evolving and how the industry is evolving. You're going to have the coverage and the support you need for your unique operation. The Milwaukee region has the highest concentration of jobs in food, beverage, and ingredients manufacturing in the nation. From production to processing right down to our plates, our regional food industry offers career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. <laughs> 